Okay, guys, good evening. Thank you guys for all coming. Um, I know break time is coming, so I will try to make this short, sweet, and excellent. Um, tonight, we are going to cover my big idea, which is Entrust KCIT. And we're going to talk about what the company is, why Kansas City needs this company, um, cost and scalability, competition, and lastly, my prediction and vision for the company. So, a day doesn't go by without technology touching our lives in one way or another. Um, it's become an integrated part of our everyday lives. We use it all the time. Businesses rely on computers, servers, other hardware and software just to operate. Um, technology is basically the backbone of business, but it needs something, <coughs> and that's where this company comes in. So, in Trust KC, IT provides security, data recovery, computer repair, network installation, server management, and proactive maintenance to support small businesses seeking to outsource their IT needs. Um, this company solves a problem. We're taking care of technology for a business so they don't have to worry about it anymore. Our mission is to become the leading IT outsourcing company in Kansas City for small businesses, which is um, a business that has less than 100 so why does Kansas City need and trust KCIT? Um, because on the Kansas City market alone, there's a huge market here. According to the Kansas City Business Journal in 2011, Kansas, the Kansas City metropolitan area had over 50,000 small businesses. Um, so there's a, this, there, we could go really big with this if we wanted to. Um, I think our my particular plan is going to be really unique in the marketplace. There are only about 100 IT companies um, around right now, but they don't offer all the services that we will provide. <coughs> okay, so on the cost and scalability, based on my research, I'm looking for about $40,000 to start this company. And while this is like a really hefty number, this is going to buy us about six months if we just really crapped out and couldn't get any clients to come on board. This is going to hire us a technician and other things that I'll talk about in just a second. This company is going to be based on my home, so there's no physical costs associated with it as of now. Um, as the owner, I will not be taking a salary. I mentioned earlier we're going to hire a technician, and a technician in this field usually ranges around $60,000 for an average salary. Um, coupled with health benefits that you would probably provide for them, you're looking at uh, $53.50 a month. The company's hardware, for me, such as computers and other things that you might need to go out and repair things, um, you're looking at about $900 a month. Utilities to keep things rolling at my house is going to be about $200 a month. Um, Amazon, Amazon Cloud Space, which I'll get to a bit more in just a second, that's about $125 a month to outsource uh, data recovery. Um, commercial liability insurance is going to be about $100 a month for a company of my size with one or two employees. Um, web branding, which includes web hosting and buying domains, that's going to be about $150 a month. And LLC formation is about $200, which you break it down into the monthly cost, we're looking at $17 a month. And that's all in the brochure that we're down for you, so you don't have to like, remember that off the top of your head. Okay, so what is it going to cost us for each of these services? For security, computer repair, proactive maintenance, and the uh, network installation, that's all taken care of with our technician and the hardware that we've already provided. So I'm paying a technician to go out and manage the servers and install the networks at these companies. So that's already taken care of. Um, the data recovery, this goes back to the Amazon cloud space. I don't want to pay $10,000 per server for multiple servers. I don't want to have to pay for the server rack to house them. I don't want to cool them and then buy backup things to keep them running all the time. So I'm just going to outsource that to Amazon, play $150 for a monthly fee, buy some about a terabyte of space. Um, so until I get a lot of clients, that should be enough to keep us going. Um, for proactive maintenance, I'm going to use a free website called logmein.com. It's basically that I can virtually log onto a customer's computer from my house. My technician can do it. I can do it from anywhere. Um, and just see what they're doing without being there physically. And this is going to help us diagnose and uh, you know, fix problems before they even arise. So what are we going to charge? Based on competitors' costs, I've come up with like a roughly estimate of a flat fee per month that we could charge small companies of 10 to 20 employees starting out. Um, that $2,000 a month is going to be a promotional cost. So after six months, after we've made a few clients and got people interested, we're going to um, 
after they've been on with, with us for six months, we're going to increase that to 3500 a month. Um, costs are subject to change based on company size. I haven't really thought too much about this uh, in the long run. I'm thinking that when we start out, we're going to be looking at really small companies, though, so that those costs are, are where I think we're going to be in the first year. Um, and then we're also going to try to have a yearly contract with these guys. We want to make sure we're happy with them and they're happy with us um, and that we're meeting all our needs and everything's good. And if we want to start with smaller businesses so as they grow, we can grow with them. If they go from 20 employees to 50, we want to be able to, you know, up that cost to cover our resources that are going to be needed. So <clears throat> I put together a pro forma. So this is the income statement for the first year. Um, if we launched in May, we're looking at maybe trying to gain two clients a month. Um, after we gain the first 10 clients, you see our costs, our expenses are going to double. I'm probably going to hire a second employee to come in and help with those. Um, this is just kind of a rough estimate. I wanted to show you guys after a year, if we you know, hit all these marks, we'd be making $125,000 in profit. That's without me taking a salary. So, competition in the IT industry. So the strengths that we have over the competition right now, I think, are um, we're just going to uncover our pricing models. I called around to a lot of different IT companies here, and first off, not all of them offer all of these services. Maybe they just offer data recovery and security. Maybe it's just antivirus software. Um, none of them specialize in all of them. So. A company looking at outsource IT is going to have to go to multiple different places. We're going to offer it in one place for one flat fee. Um, one company that I talked to charges a $500 installation fee per computer at your business and then just to install their services and then $100 a month after that. So a company with 20 employees, you're looking at $10,000 just to start and then $2,000 a month after that. Um, other companies, um, there's one Element Infotech. They charge an hourly fee, and this is going to be, I think this is kind of crappy for companies because you're not going to be able to budget out, um, you know, but whenever you're paying. Like maybe one year you use, or one month you use four hours of IT services, maybe the next you use, you know, 50. You're not going to have a set budget or a flat fee to pay every month. So weaknesses, we don't have any credibility in the marketplace yet. Uh, we're just starting, so we're going to have to go out and really hit the pavement to, to find customers' um, opportunities. It's a large market. Um, threat of new competition. Anybody and their mom can start an IT business, um, and you don't have to. Out, you don't. Have, I mean, companies here in Kansas City could look anywhere to outsource IT. It could be, you know, all over the United States, all over the world. So low barriers to entry, and they could be anywhere. Threat of substitutes. Companies could just choose to keep their IT in-house and hire that one technician to come in and maybe they just want to buy their own servers and cooling units. So, I mean, you know, that they could choose to do that and that would put us at a bad place. So, how are we going to get our clients? Ignore this for two seconds. Okay, so first I'm going to visit Kansas City Chamber events. Um, such as the greater, the greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce of Business, or we could go around to like Olita or Overland Park Chambers of Commerce. Um, we're really looking for small businesses right now that we can grow with and stay with on the long term. Um, social media, screen, Facebook, Twitter, blogging. On a blog, you could give little IT tips, uh, you know, to keep people interested, and that's going to keep search engine optimization at a high. To where your links are going to come up more organically. Um, iWeb, I can create, this is a rough sketch of what the website could look like. You just have the logo, you've got, you know, our tagline, and this is just a really rough sketch, but I can make that on my Mac computer for free, so I don't have to pay for it, which is kind of nice. Okay, so the best case, worst case, I think the best case we could have six clients in the first three months. I think that would be optimal. I think that would be really good. Um, worst case, we could have no clients in the first six months and I've just wasted $40,000 of my own money. Um, my prediction, I'd like to have three or four clients in the first three months. Um, not quite breaking even, but I think we, we could work with that for a little while. So my vision, 
I want to continually add to the client base. I'd like to have 10 or more customers in the first year. Uh, my vision for three years is to dominate the Kansas City market, and in five, hopefully expand into St. Louis. So now that you know a little bit about the business, awesome scalability, competition, and my own particular vision, are there any questions? Tracy, you, you define small businesses between one and 100, but I really feel you're, you're, there are two things you're looking at. If you're visiting those chambers, then you're looking at new companies as well, startups like yourself, mm -hmm. and I'm worried about that cost to a startup, because okay. they're like you, they don't have a lot of money. Right. And so, while I think this price point makes sense at where you, I think your brochure says 10 to 20, um, there's, there's sort of a dichotomy. Am I chasing new business who can't necessarily afford 2,000 to 3,500 by the outsourcing? If you have a different pricing model for that. Uh, and how do I convert the 10 to 20 established, they already have an IT solution, convert away from what they're using to get? Well, I, well, first, I think that you have to do, especially whenever I'm a small startup, so when you're working with small startups, I think you have to kind of do it on a case-by-case -case basis and kind of work with them, especially what can you afford, what are you willing to afford, what are you paying now, and how can we help you grow your own business through your IT optimization. Um, your second question was? How do you, what's, how do you convert people from their existing IT solutions? Okay, so they're probably overpaying, first off, to have all of their IT in-house. So we're hoping to just uh, take that away from them and the cost that they're saving by outsourcing it will, over time, um, take away from all of that that they initially invested. <coughs> I think I'm still wrapping my mind around one to 100 employees. That's such a huge, yeah. I think I tend to think in terms of one to 20, 20 to 50, and then 50 to 100, and that those are three completely different types of companies. Okay. That, that one to 20, I really like this for them, but not at that price point. Well, no, 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 like that's based on 10 to 20 employees. So obviously as you scale higher. So what would, it be, what would it be for a smaller business? Because that would, I think those are the, there's ones where you're getting them where they don't have an IT solution yet, and you're saying, here, I can, well, start, I mean, can, I can I mean, grow with you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I really think that's a case by case. My CFO is sitting in the back. Okay. 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 You notice you had a healthy profit margin, so there is good for one of the pricing. That, uh, can we go back to your pro forma? Mm -hmm. That 125 in that first year, mm -hmm. do you want to take a salary the following year? And I, what do you do in terms awesome. of, so, so are you still going to keep a full-time job? Yeah. So this would be your full-time job? Yes. With no salary? Wait, wait a minute, because in year two, that really bumps up because those 2,000 burn off into 3,500s. Right. That's huge. But I think it's too huge because I think the price is too huge. Did you consider, um, what do they sell, packs, blocks, some some form, so you, you come to uh, this business and you say, I can do 2000 a month, and you said now you have a little bit of room, you say, here's here's how we get together as a bit, here's how you can see, buy X number of hours from us, and we'll sell it to you prepaid at X rate, here we go, we're ready to go, and let's Let's start using. In fact, let's start using some of those right now. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that would that would be definitely something to consider. Yeah, it's it's money in the bank. It's pretty right bad. now. Mm -hmm. And it, and if if less than see the need, they determine they've seen the need. Really, not much risk. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely something to consider. You have room to adjust the price. Right. Right. It's just a run. Thank you.